Hello YouTube and welcome back to Dare to Game. Today we're playing Elden Ring and we're doing another weapon video and today it's going to be the nine best weapons for arcane scaling. So this is not a ranking video. I mean I will do them in, uh, you know, I'll have numbers on them but that's really just for ordering them for the video's sake. How good these weapons are is really going to depend on your play style and, and what you're specializing in. But basically these weapons are the ones that scale the best with arcane. So the higher your arcane skill is the better these weapons are going to be. So anyone going for arcane builds, whether that's bleed or otherwise, are going to be... They're going to want to focus on these weapons. So uh, let's just dive on in and start off with uh, number nine. So at number nine, you can see we've got the Reduvia. So for the Reduvia, uh, just for some attributes required to use it, strength of five, dex of 13, arcane of 13, so not very high. Uh, the passive effect is that it causes 96 points of blood loss buildup, so pretty epic there. Of course, mind you, we are testing all of these with an arcane of 75, so decently high arcane there. We have the Reduvia Blood Blade special attack for this uh, weapon. It's a pretty standard uh, attack. It basically just throws a ranged attack that uh, uh, causes hemorrhaging, which uh, can be pretty powerful against a lot of enemy types, including other players. And that and the fact that it can be fired in rapid succession makes it a really, really powerful special ability. Not to mention, dual wielding these bad boys is an extremely intense DPS. I love the Reduvias and I love dual wielding them. It's one of my favorite builds. So as far as where to get this, it's one that's pretty easy and can be done early in the game. It's down here in Limgrave. You're going to want to make your way over into this little river that goes under this bridge over here. And right when you get around here by Murkwater Cave, there'll be an NPC invasion. And when you defeat, the NPC, you'll get the dagger because it'll drop. So that is how you get it. Let's move on to the next weapon. All right, number eight on our list is going to be the Moray Executioner's Sword. So you can see it's a great big two-handed weapon. I know a lot of people are a big fan of this, and just quite recently, since they fixed the arcane scaling, I've been coming up against players using it quite a bit in PvP. Pretty fun weapon, looks real cool, obviously just like a giant sword. As far as some base level stats for this, uh, we've got an arcane scaling of D, so not the best, but it still does scale with arcane rather well. Strength even better, so this one goes better with a strength and arcane build. For attributes required to use this one, strength of 24, arcane of 23, and dexterity of 14. And no passive effects on this one, but it does have the Eocade's Dancing Blade special attack. So with that one here, basically, it's just going to be a charm attack that launches the blade forward into a spinning corkscrew attack and then drops down in a pretty powerful slash and you can either launch it as quickly as possible or if you charge it like I did initially it's going to just increase the duration of the spin and the damage that it does. So it can be an incredibly devastating special attack, and like I said, I know a lot of people enjoy using it, especially in PvP. So as far as where to get this sword, it is the reward for a boss fight, and you're going to need to make your way up to the Altus Plateau region, and come through this valley here, make your way up and around a little hidden path back into the Shaded Castle. And then you make your way to the end of the Shaded Castle, and you fight Elmer of the Briar. So he'll be, you know, deep into the Shaded Castle. Once you've done that, he will drop this weapon, and you'll have it. So that is how you get the Moray Executioner Sword. Let's move on to number seven. All right, and so for number seven, we have Mogwin's Sacred Spear, which you can see I'm dual wielding here. It's a big old trident style great spear, very, very powerful weapon just in its own right. But again, it's going to scale rather well with Arcane. So as far as some base level stats on this, uh, for passive effects, we do have a blood loss buildup of 92. Attributes required to use this one are Strength of 24, Arcane of 27, and Dexterity of 14. Uh, this one has a C for Arcane scaling and for Strength. So again, this one's going to do rather well with a Strength and Arcane build, but this one does scale a bit better with arcane than Murray's Executioner Sword does. So this one is going to be pretty great for most arcane type builds, at least ones based around heavy weapons. Uh, this one has the special attack Bloodborne Ritual, which is a pretty fun attack, does uh, some pretty cool bloody explosions, and can be pretty effective in uh, several forms of combat. So you can see if we use that one charge it up for a big old bloody explosion, and you can do that up to three times, so... and it'll just put out area of effect damage, and then it also coats your weapon in blood flame ability for a while, so when you stab with that, you're going to be doing the blood flame damage, which is one of the most uh, powerful incantations in the game, at least for weapon upgrade. As far as getting this one goes, you're going to have to make your way over to the Mogwin Dynasty Mausoleum, and it's in this kind of subsection of the Siafra River area, and the only way to get to here, at least the only one that I know of, is to make your way up to the Consecrated Snowfield, that's what it's called, and then you get there through a portal. You go to Ordina Liturgical Town, and then you just just head straight southwest until about right here you'll find a portal and you get in that portal and it will bring you to this secret subregion you'll start back here and you kind of work your way out into the palace approach ledge site of grace then you just fight your way through up into the mogwin dynasty mausoleum and you do the boss fight you kill mog lord of blood and then you'll get a remembrance from him which you can trade in at round table hole and so it's a boss fight weapon i would say definitely worth it it's one of the best spear type thrusting weapons in the game and again if you're going for an arcane build it's basically the only spear type 
type weapon that scales really well with arcane. So that is where you get it. All right, and so for the number six spot on our list, even though it's not a ranking, we have the Rivers of Blood, a lot of people's absolute favorite katana. And depending on how your skills are loaded out, uh, namely if you have a high arcane skill, it can be one of the best in the game. As far as some stats on this one go, we do have a passive effect. It causes a blood loss buildup of 77. Uh, attributes required to use it are strength of 12, dexterity of 18, and arcane of 20. Uh, for attribute scaling, again, we're going to have a D rating in arcane, so not the best, but still pretty dang good, especially considering how good this weapon is and how fast it swings and such, and how much blood loss buildup you have for it. Uh, and it does have the special attack of the Corpse Piler, which I know is a lot of people's favorite special attack in the game. So the Corpse Piler, just the description says, forms a blade of cursed blood for repeated interweaving successive attacks. Follow up with an additional input for further successive attack. If we do it, it gives us that, and we can kind of just keep going until there. So it's got its whole move set that can be very effective and not only deals a ton of damage to those directly in front of you that you're actually able to hit, but it will actually throw that blood slash forward dealing damage to other enemies that are close enough. As far as getting this weapon goes, you it is a later game weapon because you have to be able to get to the mountaintops of the Giants region. But once you get up here, you can make your way up and around and down into the eastern section over here where we're at and make your way towards the Church of Repose, which is where I'm currently located. Once you get to about here, I believe, you'll be invaded by the Bloody Finger Okina. And uh, once you've defeated the Bloody Finger Okina, they will drop the Okina Mask, which is part of the White Reed set, and also a Rivers of Blood Katana. So again, if you're going to want two of these, unless you're going to find someone that'll give you one drop-wise in multiplayer, you're going to need to do New Game Plus. But uh, honestly, pretty great weapons, real great special attack, and if you really want to be a blood-dealing samurai build, it's kind of your only option. That is the Rivers of Blood. Let's move on to number five. All right, and so number five on our list, we have Eleonora's Pole Blade, which I know is by far a lot of people's uh, favorite twin blade type weapon in the game. And for good reason, because it's a pretty great weapon and looks pretty cool. As far as stats on this one go, uh, for attributes required, we have a strength of 12, arcane of 19, and a dexterity of 21. Passive effects, uh, it causes a blood loss buildup of 82. Attribute scaling, again, it's going to be uh, mostly dexterity, but then we've also got a strength and uh, arcane rating of D. So not the best, but it still does scale pretty well with arcane. And for our special attack, we have the Blood Blade Dance, which I know is a lot of people's favorite uh, special attack. And for the description on this one, it says, Leap at foe to perform a flurry of tornado-like attacks. Follow up with an additional input to perform an attack that ends in an evasive maneuver. So if we do that, we're just going to do that and then follow up and we come to the back so a lot of people like that because not only does it help with quite a few powerful attacks to the front but then after you've done it again it backs you up and takes you out of the line of combat as far as where to get this weapon goes you'll naturally get it as part of yura's quest line or you can just come up here in the altus plateau to the second church of america once you get here you'll be invaded by eleonora violet bloody finger you can kill her i mean if you can kill her uh, she will drop this weapon and so that's how you get eleonora's pole blade so like i said you do not need to do your quest line to do this, uh, but it is part of it if you are doing your quest line, so you'll naturally get it. Definitely not one you want uh, you want to miss if you want to be a pole blade build, or if, especially if you're doing an arcane build. That is number five. Let's move on to number four. All right, and so for our number four weapon on this list, we have the Dragon Communion sales, uh, Seals. So this is going to be one for uh, incantation type playthroughs, which I don't necessarily have uh, specced out on my character here, but it is the one seal that scales rather well with arcane. So if you're doing an arcane build and you want to throw in a little bit of faith in there so you can use some faith-based uh, incantation attacks then the dragon communion seal is going to be your best one just for some general stats on here we have attributes required of faith of 10 and arcane of 10 so nothing ridiculously high there it does have an s rating in arcane scaling so pretty dang high it's going to have a hell of a powerful effect and the passive effect is that it boosts dragon communion incantations so if you're going to try to max out your abilities with the dragon communion seal it's going to be best to have a really high arcane skill uh, and obviously a high faith skill because it also scales pretty well with faith and then you're going to want to try to pair uh, Dragon Communion incantations with it, of which there are quite a few, and quite a few of them are very, very powerful. So if you do that, it's one of the most powerful faith builds in the game, because it's uh, Faith and Arcane, and they pile off each other rather well with this seal. Just for stats, uh, that's where you're at with this, with the Dragon Communion seal. But as far as getting the seal goes, it's actually real early in the game where you can access it. So you start off at the Stranded Graveyard, and that's right where I'm at, so you can see where I am in Limgrave, it's right where you start off the game. And uh, there's a wall here that you need two stone sword keys to get into and once you've gotten into it and you kind of make your way all the way to the end of the dungeon or one of the ends of the dungeon you'll be able to grab this so i'll just kind of zip through and show you the path
And so once you've killed the spectral enemy in this room, he will drop the dragon communion sail, and that is how you get it. So I definitely recommend it. All right, and so at number three, we have Morgoth's Cursed Sword. And so this one is just going to be a great curved sword, uh, very large and powerful. As far as stats on this one go, for attributes required, strength of 14, dex of 35, so a pretty high dexterity requirement, and arcane of 17. Passive effects, it causes blood loss buildup, and we've got 90 points of it on here. For a special attack, we have the Cursed Blood Slice, which uh, the description for that says brace, then charge forward to deliver a downward diagonal slice. The bloody trail of the late is followed by a burst of flame. Additional inputs allow for follow-up attack. So this is another one that after using it, you can quickly follow up and use it some more. So I know a lot of people really enjoy that. As far as what the attack looks like, see we brace and charge forward and slice, and then if we just keep going, we can do, you know, some pretty pow powerful attacks. And uh, this one, again, is going to be one that is great targeting against larger enemies, but is also pretty good at taking out smaller groups of enemies. So it will do uh, not quite area of effect, but a big old slash of forward projectile in some sort of a vectoring uh, direction. As far as where to get this weapon, you're going to need to make your way up to the Altus Plateau region and around the outside of the capital, get into the capital, fight your way through the capital, climb up the tree branches, get your way into the Air Tree Sanctuary, then up to the Queen's Bedchamber, and then finally make your way up to the Elden Throne. Once you've gotten up to the Elden Throne for the first time, you will have one of the main boss fights in the game against Morgoth the Omen King. And once you've defeated Morgoth the Omen King, you will get the Remembrance of the Omen King, and you can take that to Round Table Hold and trade it with the Finger Reader Enya for this sword. So that is a Morgoth's Cursed Sword. Let's move on to the number two item on this list. All right, so for number two on this list, we have a bow, and it's the Serpent Bow. So pretty cool looking little short bow kind of type thing. As far as stats on this bad boy, attributes required to use it are strength of eight, dexterity of 15, and an arcane of 11. This one has a D rating for arcane scaling, so not the best in the world, but, you know, obviously the best for any bows in the game. Special attack on this one is the Mighty Shot, so it's pretty similar to a lot of bows. Basically, it's just a charge shot where you can overdraw the bow, and it makes it more powerful when you shoot. Uh, a lot of the better effects that you're going to have with this bow are going to come from what type of ammo you're shooting out of it, so I've got some fire arrows here that I'll be using. Pretty great weapon if you want to be an archer. There's a regular shot, and here's our overcharged shot. So, you know, nothing too out of the ordinary for a bow. As far as getting this weapon goes, uh, it can be both easy and difficult. So you're going to need to be over here in the Kalid region. So you can see I'm starting from the smoldering wall. We're going to want to go into the abandoned cave. So I'll just quick zip over and show you how to get in there. And so that's how you get down to the cave, and then you're going to want to kind of zip through the cave as fast as possible, because inside there's just going to be a bunch of uh, scarlet rot pools on the ground, so you got to watch out, because otherwise the scarlet rot will get you. But it's going to be near the end of the cave in a pool, so I'll just kind of zip to it as quick as I can. I believe it's actually found on this guy right here, so maybe not all the way towards the end. I could be wrong, but this cave also isn't very large. If you want this uh, bow, you're just going to have to get into the cave and look for it. Unfortunately, I already grabbed it once in this playthrough, so I don't know exactly where it is. But I think it might be on this guy right here. So uh, that's the serpent bow. Sorry, I couldn't be more specific, but uh, you know, once I've already looted something in a playthrough, it's hard for me to exactly remember where it was from, unless it was really specific, in which case, you know, then it's easier to remember. But this one was not. So that's number two. Let's move on to number one. And for our number one weapon on this list, again, these are not in order of effectiveness or damage or anything like that. It's really just, you know, to help me organize that. Uh, we have the Bloody Helis, which is a heavy thrusting sword. I know probably a lot of people's favorite heavy thrusting sword. So as far as stats on this one go, for attributes required, we have a strength of 16 and an arcane of 17 and a dexterity of 19. This one also causes a blood loss buildup, a pretty high one. We have 101 for that. As far as scaling goes, we're going to have E for strength, C for dexterity, and B for arcane. So this one scales pretty well with arcane. And this one has the Dynast finesse special attack, which is actually not one that I personally like, but that's probably just because I haven't used it enough. Uh, the description for that attack is nimbly avoid an attack, securing some distance from foes, follow up with a strong attack to perform a sudden lunge, and press strong attack again to perform a sweeping slice. As far as getting it goes, again, this is going to be an Altus Plateau one, so once you make your way up to the Altus Plateau, you're going to want to come over here to Writhe Blood Ruins, which is going to be full of those rotten kind of dog type enemies and the uh, damaged sponge blobs. I'm sure they have more official names than that, I just don't know them. Then you're going to go down into the dungeon of this dungeon and there will be a boss fight in this room once you've won this boss fight 
you go open up the back door and open up this chest and the bloody hells will be found in there again as far as i know you can only get one of these per playthrough so if you're going to want to get two you're either going to have to get someone to drop you the other one or just you know start a new game plus and get it again and uh like most thrusting type weapons really really powerful when you dual wield them so that is uh the last one we're going to look at the bloody hellas all right and so that is all nine of the best arcane scaling weapons i found in the game and where to find them so hopefully if you were looking for weapons that are going to make you an insanely powerful arcane uh user then this guide was good for you thanks for watching another dare to game video if you like this video please leave a like and a comment if you haven't already be sure to subscribe to the channel if you like my content and would like to support this channel consider becoming a member today for as little as $1.99 a month it makes a huge difference but in any case thanks for watching and have a nice day i'll see you next time